are maintaining your metadata webinar, um, just some housekeeping notes. We'll be sending out both the presentation slides and a recording of the webinar shortly after we're finished. The phones are muted, but feel free to ask any questions you have in the questions pane, um, and we'll try to answer them either during the webinar or at the end. So the focus of this webinar is maintaining your metadata. I'll touch briefly on what metadata we collect, then describe how you can add to, update, and evaluate your metadata. We won't be covering how to initially register your metadata. So when you register your content with Crossref, you create a metadata record for that content. The record, as with most metadata, describes the content in detail. The level of detail is up to you, but a record must contain bibliographic metadata like author names, ORCIDs, affiliations, article titles, ISSN and ISBN, um, any internal identifiers you may have, URLs of, that you want the um, record to land on, and of course, your Crossref identifier, which is a DOI. We collect a fair amount of other metadata as well. It's not traditional bibliographic metadata, so it's not something you'd use when citing an item, but it can be just as important for describing your content and where it sits in relation to other scholarly objects. We collect um, archive info, um, so that's where you intend to archive your content once you stop publishing it on your site. Uh, we collect free-to-read information for open content. We collect reference lists, funding data, license data, clinical trial numbers, um, information about errata retractions and updates through our Crossref service. Um, we're also starting to collect some information about relationships between items. Together, it all adds up to a complete metadata record. It's not easy to gather and send along this met metadata, and we do recognize that. Um, so we only really require bibliographic metadata, but a complete record will have all of the above and help place your content on the scholarly map. So if you've been registering your content with us for a while and you've admitted or fudged some of this data, it's okay. I'm going to go into how to update your existing records with corrections and enhancements. When you create a record with us, the most persistent part is the identifier you register, the DOI. The rest of the record can be updated and expanded continuously. Again, we make a, dis dis a distinction between bibliographic and other metadata. It's all important, but when you create a metadata record, you must include bibliographic metadata and it identifiers when your content is initially registered. You can include all of the metadata we collect in your initial registration, but most non-bibliographic metadata can be added post-registration as you are able, and I'll get into how to do that in a second. Um, as I mentioned before, bibliographic metadata includes citation metadata, like authors, titles, ISSNs, and other details used in citing the item. It can also use ORCIDs for authors if you collect that. Um, it could include JATS formatted abstracts. These are both optional, but we strongly recommend them. This metadata is used to identify the item being registered. Um, it's also distributed to third parties and is used to look up your DOIs so that people can link to your content. So it's very important um, that the metadata you send us be clean and accurate. Um, and you can't create a metadata record at all without metadata, so you do need to send us at least some metadata. You can add some types of metadata to an existing record after you've registered your content. Um, this includes reference deposits. If you participate in our site advice service or if you just want to send us your references, that's okay too. We're happy to have them. Um, funding data, components, which are supplemental material records. Uh, Crossmark data, text and data mining license information, and relationships between DOIs and other identifier. So this means you can create a record for a journal article. For example, a record that contains just bibliographic metadata. You decide to participate in our cited by service, so you can at that point submit just the reference list to be added to your metadata record. You next decide to participate in Crossmark 
funding and uh, you decide to send us license data, that can be added to the existing record in segments as well without resubmitting the record as a whole. This works very well if you partner with vendors to provide funding information, for example, or if your platform doesn't support reference deposits and you want to do that on your own. You can add this metadata as needed without incurring additional fees. With the exception of Crossmark metadata, updating our record doesn't cost you anything. We charge a one-time deposit fee when a record is initially registered. Likewise, we'll charge a one-time per cross per record Crossmark fee when the Crossmark data is initially added. We don't charge for Crossmark updates to existing Crossmarked records. If you've discovered errors in your metadata or otherwise need to make an update, you'll need to redeposit your metadata with the changes included. Any metadata already in our system will be overwritten, so make sure you send us everything, particularly when updating bibliographic metadata. For example, if you deposit DOIs with an online publication date before the item has been published in print, you can update the metadata once the print info is available. The data that could be submitted using a resource deposit doesn't need to be included when only core metadata is updated, but within each resource type, you need to submit the complete resource data. So, for example, if you discover you've left out a grant number from your funding information, you can submit just the funding data in an update. You do need to include all the funding data for the item, however. We don't append data within a resource. So if you include just the grant number, the existing funding information will be overwritten, and your record will still be incomplete. So it's, just, it's important to send all of the, the data within each of these segments. URLs are a little bit special. You can update your URLs by resubmitting the bibliographic portion of your metadata record, and that's easy for a lot of our members to do. If it's not easy, for you to resubmit your metadata records, you can always send us a list of DOIs and URLs and we'll update them for you. So you would send that, that to our support staff at support at crossrap.org. If you need to remove metadata from a record, you can't really remove top level bibliographic metadata. That's only necessary when something has really gone wrong. So you, if you've registered something by mistake, you've registered something that you don't have permission to register. Um, in that case, you may need to overwrite that item with non-descriptive metadata, but that's really an option of last resort and you should contact us before you do that. So I'm not gonna tell you how to do that. <laughs> um, because we allow you to update your resource metadata in segments, we require that you be very explicit when you remove resource metadata from your record. We require that you submit an empty top-level tag to remove a segment of resource metadata. So for example, to remove all Crossmark metadata, you'll need to submit a metadata or resource XML with a closed Crossmark tag, as you see on this slide. So a closed Crossmark tag removes all Crossmark data, um, a closed program tag with the um, FundRef attribute set will remove all funding metadata. If you decide to do a big update of your metadata, there are some things to keep in mind. Um, sending us a large amount of files is usually okay depending on your def definition of large. Um, if you're sending in thousands of updates, you might want to coordinate that with us. Um, so if you've got um, 5,000 records to update, you can just send that as you're ready. Um, just be aware that our system probably won't process them instantly. You might have to wait an hour or two for everything to be processed. Um, more than 5,000, um, that, that might take a few more hours. Um, 50,000 updates, um, you should probably maybe give us a heads up um, and be aware that it might take a day or so to work through other records. It really depends on what our system traffic is and how complicated your records are. Um, if you've got over 100,000 updates, um, you should contact us um, and be prepared for the updates to take a while. Um, if you're doing updates with just bibliographic metadata, those are processed extremely quickly. Um, there usually aren't significant delays. Um, 
if you are sending in a deposit or F update that contains funding data or references in your deposits, those can take a qu quite a bit of time because for every reference that you're depositing, we query that against our database and try to find a DOI match. So that takes some extra processing time. Um, and for funding records, we also try to match up funding names with funding identifiers when they're not provided. So that can also take a little bit of extra time. So those are just things to keep in mind if, if you do plan to do a, a, like a platform update. So now we'll move on to evaluating your metadata, which can be tricky. Um, we have some plans to make it easier for you to, you to see at a glance where your problem areas are, but they aren't in place yet. But there's still a lot you can do now. I'm going to walk you through some basics. Um, we'll start with how to view the metadata you've registered with us. If you want to easily eyeball your basic metadata, you can use our metadata search interface. It presents a segment of the metadata, not everything, but it lets you know some basic information. You can search by DOI or ISSN, article title or author. It's a free text search. You can plug in an entire citation and see what you get back. Um, in this example, there's an encoding issue in the article title, and that really jumps out at you, the diamond question mark thing. Um, other common things to look for are author information. Um, we have a lot of authors who use this tool for various reasons, and they're constantly contacting us to complain about issues with their names in, in, in our members' met metadata. So um, author name misspellings, the authors are in the wrong order, or they're missing entirely. Um, that can cause them a lot of problems when they're trying to claim credit for their work and um, they're getting the data from Crossref, so they co contact Crossref um, to have that fixed and we will reach out to you and ask you to fix those items as, as they come up. We have a fairly robust REST API that is publicly available and can be used to retrieve or interrogate your metadata. It displays most of the metadata you've registered. Um, references aren't included in this API unless you have opted to make them public. Um, by default, references are not distributed to the public, but you can elect to make them public by contacting us. Um, so if you'd like to do so, and we encourage everyone to do this, please contact Crossref Support and we'll tell you how to make that happen. It's pretty easy. So you can use the REST API to retrieve all the metadata for your prefixes, or you can retrieve it DOI by DOI um, as displayed here with this, this, the query on the bottom. Here's an example of the type of record you can get from our REST API. Results are in JSON and will include the majority of the metadata you've registered with us. I've got some other um, kind of handy queries you can do. Um, you can use these for some basic troubleshooting. Here's an example query that will show you the total number of DOIs registered for your prefix. If that number doesn't match with what you expect, um, you may need to do some further digging. Um, note that the REST API is indexed fairly quickly, but not instantaneously. So if you've just registered something, you might want to wait until the next day to make sure everything is included in your query. So for most queries using the REST API, including a row count of zero in the query, will you give you a count of records in the request, but not the records themselves. So if you're not willing or able to ingest loads of JSON formatted data, you can still do, some, do these queries just to make sure the numbers of what we have line up with what you think we have. Um, you can do some filtered queries, so if you register funding data with us, you can look up all the DOIs with funder identifiers. Again, including a row count of zero, we'll just give you the number of records. You can look up the number of records with a funder identifier and a funder name. Um, you can look up the number of records with award numbers. This data will give you an idea of how effective your funding data is overall. It's also handy if you have vendors submitting this data for you and you want to keep an eye on them and make sure they're sending us all the stuff they say they're sending us. Here's some more examples. Um, you can see how many of your records have cross-marked data. Um, this isn't in this example, but you can limit these 
queries also by publication year, so you can ask our API, well, how many records have, a, have crossmark data that were published in 2013, for example. Um, you can see how many records have license URLs, and you can see how many of your records have at least one ORCID included in the metadata. We also have an XML API that can be very useful. You can look up the metadata you de deposited for an item, um, and the results are given to you back to you in XML, and the XML is pretty much what you've submitted to us. Um, so it'll show everything as you've deposited it. Again, the references will include the results will include references if you query with your system login while doing the query. We don't display references to the public unless you've enabled that, but we do, if you haven't enabled that, let you see your own references as long as we're able to identify who you are. Um, we also have a tool called the Deposit Har Harvester. It's OAI PMH based and re will retrieve your data in title based set. Um, I have links to all of these tools at the end of these slides, so when these slides are distributed, you'll, you can just go to the research page and have links to everything you need um, if you want to look into something further. Um, here's an example of the type of rec record you get when you use the Deposit Harvester or the XML API. It'll probably look very familiar to most of you. It looks just like the XML you send in for your deposits. Um, the Deposit Harvester is a very good way of retrieving complete metadata. If you've acquired content that has been registered by another member, um, you'll be able to pull down somewhat deposit-ready XML. So you can pull that down, take a look at it, make sure it's good. If it's good, leave it as it is. If it's not good, you can clean it up and send it back in. Um, so just a note on acquiring content. If you do acquire content from another member, if that content includes cross-ref DOIs, you'll be in charge of that metadata. You can re-register the metadata if you need to, but again, if it's the metadata is fine, you really need to just update the URLs. Um, and you can do that just by sending a, a list of DOIs and URLs to cross-ref support. But it's always a good idea to confirm that the metadata you're responsible for is decent. We have some reports that help you with metadata issues. Some are sent by email, usually to the technical contacts we have for your organization. So if, you, if you've had some staff turnover, make sure you keep us up to date. Um, also, please remove, review the emails we send to you that usually come from reports at crossref.org. We also send a fair number of emails to members about metadata quality issues. About uh, one third of the requests that come through Crossref support are related to metadata quality. Metadata consumers report problems one by one. As you probably know, we don't touch your metadata, so we do need to pass those reports along to you for action. We get a lot of complaints from authors about how their names or article titles are represented, and our metadata affiliates also pass along complaints about missing page numbers, incorrect titles, um, little things, but they make a big difference. Um, they could make a difference between someone finding your content in a library catalog and not finding it, for example. And also, our metadata is displayed everywhere, so even tiny errors can have a huge impact. Um, I'm going to go into detail about a few of our reports. Um, we have a title list of, on our website that allows you look, to look up titles by ISSN. It displays coverage information, which can be illuminating. If you do nothing else, journal publishers might want to scan the coverage listed to make sure you haven't missed any issues, or registered content with a publication year of 2013 or 1332, because that, that does happen. Um, <laughs> we also have the title avail data available as a CSV file. It's a big file, but if you have a lot of titles, it, it's a good way to evaluate what you've been sending to us. Um, we send out weekly Schematron reports via email. They are very metadata specific. They are used to identify messy metadata. Um, we need to be flexible and accommodate um, all sorts of variances in data. So our deposit schema can't keep all of the questionable data out without blocking good data as well. So to kind of work with this, we do a post-deposit review of metadata. 
and pick out items that we think might be incorrect. And we'll send you an alert that says, hey, you might want to take a closer look at this. Um, these reports are emailed out weekly on Saturday, and we send out an average of 45 reports a week, which um, considering we have 5,000 plus members is, isn't a large amount. Um, but it's a very effective tool. Um, and most of our members are very responsive when they get this sort of alert, and we hope you will be as well. Um, if you need help, we do have a lot of documentation. We have a very small but capable support staff. Um, we're currently US-based and give support mostly by email, but if you have a big problem, we're always ha happy to set up a phone call with you. Um, as mentioned, I've included a list of resources in the slide. Um, I've also linked to a video of a talk given by Ian Calvert at our recent Live 16 event. Um, the talk is about a half hour and focuses on metadata quality. Um, he has some fun with cross-ref metadata and data visual visualization, so if you have some time, please watch that. And if you have any questions, again, you can enter them into the question box, or you can send them to support at crossref.org or to our um, Twitter handle, which is crossref support. Okay, we don't really have any questions, which is a little unusual, but it's okay. Um, but, so if anything pops into your head, please feel free to email support at crossref.org. Um, I, I think I mentioned this at the beginning of the webinar, but my name is Patricia Feeney and I'm in charge of um, member support. So um, feel free to ask for me by name and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. <laughs>